Hello, and welcome to the Inflectra webinar on mobile testing. During today's webinar, we're going to be showing you how you can use Rapees to test mobile device applications. For today's demonstration, we've got a Nexus 7 tablet that you can see right in front of me on the webcam, uh, running Android. And we have Rapees running on the main machine whose screen I'm projecting right now. And Rapees can be used to test both Apple iOS applications and Android applications. Today we have a physical Nexus 7 device. We can do the same thing with an iPhone 4 or iPad. We can also do the same thing with a simulated device, a simulated uh, Apple device using the Xcode simulator or the Android Virtual Device Manager. And the great thing is we're using the Appian Gateway. So as you can see in this diagram below, you can have Rapide sitting on all of your, your test workstations, and it can have Appium installed locally with all the devices connected locally. Or you can have those devices hosted on a central computer and then connect to it either locally or through the cloud. So that way you've got the flexibility of a central test, centralized test lab or having it all local to your machine. So as you're doing today's webinar, what I'm going to do is show you how you can connect to the device, how you can record a simple test and play it back, and also how it saves into our Spire team test management system. So what I've done ahead of time is I've set up um, the the um, Android tablet is connected through USB to my laptop, but it could be on another machine. And I've installed the Appium Gateway, which is running right here. I just hit the play button, and Appium is now running. And that, next, what I'll do is start up Rapees, which I've got running. And I'm going to be saving my test into Spira Test. And so the first thing I want to do is just go to the Options window, go to Tools, go to Spira Connection Settings, and make sure that I'm connected to Spira. I can hit the test button to verify the connection. That's good. And then for mobile testing, I want to go to mobile settings and test my devices. And now the thing is, we have support for different types of device. And the nice feature is you can maintain a list of different devices as different profiles, and you can share them with your team members. So that way, if you have a set of devices that you will be testing on, you can build these different profiles, and they can store the different properties of the, of the device being tested. For an Android device, it typically will include the operating system, the operating system version. If it's a physical device, the device ID, and also the location of the app you will be deploying. And one of the nice features of Rapees is it will actually deploy the application from your local machine onto the device centrally for you. For an iOS device, it's identical. Let me choose our iPhone 4. And you'll see here we're connecting to an Apple Mac PC that's hosting Appium and the device. And it's going to transfer the application from that machine onto the onto the uh, the phone. This case is an iPhone 4, and also we specify the iOS device, the platform version of iOS, and then if it's a physical device, you also need the UDID. The one additional thing you need to do with Apple iOS is have an Apple Developer account and have those profile those those devices linked to your Apple profile. But apart from that, it's the same for both types of device. So once you set those up correctly, you can now go into Rapees, and you'll choose File. Create new test, and we'll choose a, we'll choose a demo project. In this case, you would choose hopefully a real project. We'll choose a folder that we already have, but you could create a new folder as well. And we'll choose new test case, and we're going to call it Android Test One. Hit OK. And if you're familiar with using Rapees for web testing or desktop application testing, these steps will be familiar to you. And in fact, we'll be doing a webinar on those topics. Uh, later on this month. But for right now, what we'll do is choose the mobile profile, and that's really important for a mobile test. For web tests or desktop applications, you can leave it as a default. And now what we'll do is hit Create from Spira, and we choose the device profile. But don't worry, you can always change it later if you want to change the device, so it's not a problem. But right now, we'll choose the Android Nexus 7, which is the one on the webcam. Hit OK, and it's going to create my test. Excellent. Now what I can do is begin testing. And there are two things I want to typically do. At the very beginning, before actually recording a test, I want to verify the connection and make sure that Rapides is able to inspect the application. So you make sure you choose from the SPY tool, Mobile SPY, click the button. OK, choose your device, and then hit Get Snapshot. When we do that, you will notice on the webcam right in front of me, you'll see the application launch.
And while it's doing that, you'll notice in Appium, things happening, and that's where it shows the, the connection information. Oh, and you can see the screen. Been active. Okay, oops. There we go, there's the application. Now it's launched, it pops up a screen here. So you can see the exact same application on my screen, on that physical device, is available through Rapides web, uh, through its uh, mobile spy. And if you have a virtual device, it works the same way, except instead of being on the physical device, you'll see the screen appear on the virtual device manager. So we'll choose login button. And you notice that when you click on it, it selects it in the left-hand side on our tree view. And you have the flexibility of navigating either through the tree view, which shows you all of the object properties, or you can navigate on the physical screen itself like this. And as you do that, when you change it to the different buttons, you'll see the properties in this middle window change. And any of the properties you see here, you can use to test against. So you can verify the kind of object you have, the text that's being displayed, the position, the location, the width. You can check various properties like, is it enabled? Is it read-only? Is it got focus? So as you do your test of your application, these are the kinds of things you can test against to make sure that your application is performing as expected. There's also the automation ID and the X path. These are the ways that Rapiz actually identifies the, the object. So when you record your test script, it's going to use those properties to actually locate the item. OK, so now that we've verified that we can connect correctly, I'm going to disconnect and close my spy tool. And now I'm going to actually record a test case. So I'll choose Record and Learn. And that's going to bring up the recording window. And again, if you're used to web testing or, or desktop application testing using Rapiz, this will be very familiar to you. The difference now is that I use the spy tool and to actually connect the device again. So it's the same device, X7, hit get snapshot. But this time I'm actually going to be using this learn object feature right here to actually learn the objects and put them into my test file. It's connecting right now, and you see on the screen it's changed to the application right here, and I've got my objects again. Now, what I'll do is in this simple test, I'm going to attempt to log in, so I'll choose the login button, and I'm going to learn that. And you'll notice as I learn things, they appear in this grid underneath right here. Then I click on the actual device, login, to move to the next screen, and I hit get snapshot to update my screen, and I'll now get the next page. And I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to type on the device a login and password. You'll see me do it on the webcam. Please don't use this password at home. So you can see there, I've done that. Now, what I can do is learn those objects. Learn, I want to learn the username. I want to learn the password and the login button. So I'll learn all of those. And I also want to learn the result fields. So what I'll do is I'll refresh my snapshot so that's now displayed. And I can learn the result field. Learn. Great. And now I want to go back to the home page. So I want to learn that as well. So I hit get snapshot. Oh, sorry, I went to learn. My mistake. Do it again. I want to hit learn. Great. So now I've learned the objects. Now I hit finish. And that's going to save those into my test script. So if I go back to here, you'll see the device. And you'll see I have the buttons, the text boxes, and everything. So what I want to do now is construct a test. And so the first stage would just be to simply play it back exactly as I did it. So what I'll do is first, we're going to go to here, and we're going to click on the login, which is called text one. We can rename these objects if you wish. So text one is not very meaningful. In a real situation, you probably want to rename that you know, the login buttons. I'll just do do action. And after we so clicking on that, we're going to go to the login page, and we're going to set a login. Now, I want to set a different login than the one I typed in. So that's very easy. I can just do, uh, we'll log in as Fred. OK. Oops. And then we're going to log in. We're going to set the password, and we'll set that as maybe a better password. Uh, set text. And then you've got the drag and drop editor repeats to set these in. So we'll log in as Fred, password, um, 
password 234. Also not a good password, so please don't use that one either at home. And now we'll hit the submit button, which is called Android widget button. And yet again, we can rename that to submit if you wish to make it more meaningful or log in, whatever it is that makes sense to you. And then you can go drag that, dot, do action. And then lastly, we want to go back to the home page. Okay, save that. So we've got a very simple test script. It's not the, it's not the most interesting test script, but it, it, it logs through and tests that it works. So let's go ahead and play that. So when I hit play, it's going to play that back against the device. And it, you won't see it on my screen, but you'll see it on the Nexus tablet. So I'm just going to move it back into view. And it should, if all works correctly, launch it on the device. And let me close my instant messenger. And you should see here on the bottom right, you should see it playing and the device playing it back. So it has to launch the application like that. And now it's going to play it through. And you can see it's entering it in right now. Spread. And it's going to put in password 234. And I hit the login button. And it's done. Very good. So that's a very simple example right there. And it's going to come back as passed. Now, obviously, to be more useful, we really want that to actually verify that the result was correct. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add a verify step. So what I'll do here is I will add a step to verify that the result is as we expected. And that label status, that's the status of the login. And we want to verify that. So let's go, go ahead here. And we want to get the text. And let's just drag that over here like that. That gets us the text. And we want to verify that equals what we expect. So we're going to use our handy global function, the tester function, which you can drag and drop. And we'll test that they're equal. So we're going to drag that over right here. I'm going to put that get text in here. We want to verify that equals thread slash password 234. Save that. And before I run it, one more thing I want to do is I want to make this a bit more of a useful test case. I'm going to simply make this into a function to do the login. So what I can do for that, to show you those familiar with other forms of testing, this will be familiar, there's basically a user file, and that's where you put your custom functions. So we're going to extract this whole thing, and we're going to put it into the user file right here. And that becomes a scenario for us. And we'll just simply parameterize the login and password. Put those here. And we can do the same thing here. We'll just take these out and make those variables. So in a real situation, this is kind of how it would look. You've got a function that has a login and it passes the login and password, does the action, verifies the result, and uh, tests the answer. Oh, actually, this, this goes back to the home page. So we'll let me take that one out, that back in here. OK, so now we need to call our function. And the nice thing with repeat is once you've made a user function, it is available in the object tree, along with everything else. So I can just grab login, and I can just drag it right above the B, going back to the home page, right here. And we'll log in with thread and password 234. So now we've done that, we can now play back our test. Make sure our device is on the screen. Yep. Let's see. Yeah. Go back to the home page. The device is active. If the screensaver comes on on the device, sometimes you have to unlock that. So when you're doing mobile testing for real, we usually recommend disabling the screen the screensaver to make sure and the keyboard lock. Otherwise, it can be frustrating. So for today's demo, we should have done it on the devices. So what I'll do now is play it back. 
and I've done it correctly, it should play back. And what it's doing again, it's going to copy the application, the ADP file, over to the device. And it will launch it, and you should see it on the webcam. Meanwhile, on the playback screen in Rapids, you'll see the progress as it starts to play back. Okay, it launched it. Perfect. And now we have a completed test case, but this time we actually verify the answer that matches, which is great. Now, obviously, to make sure, just to prove that our testing is really testing something, we can make sure that we're going to verify that our, our script is, is really working. What we can do is we can deliberately cause it to fail. So we'll change that to instead of using login slash password, we'll use login colon password. So we know it won't match. And now if I play it back, just to make sure that our testing is good, we want to verify a failure case. So I'm running the same testing again. This time it should fail because I'm now checking for a different value than the one we're actually going to get. And you can see on the screen it's playing it back. It's put Fred in, putting in the password. And it will hit the login button in just a second. There you go. And now it's going to check the value. And we know it's going to fail. Well, hopefully it will fail. Yes, it does. And so it failed, and it gives us the specific feedback. It expected it to be Fred colon password 234, but it was actually Fred slash password 234. So that's very good. So it works correctly, and it, will, and it verifies that it tests. It fails correctly when we deliberately made it to fail. OK, so we're done with our testing. And the last thing we would do is save to Spira just so we have a record of our tests. So you hit save to Spira. It's going to create the repository folder. Hit create, upload the files. OK. And you're done. So you've now completed a simple mobile test. And just to recap, what we did today is we connected to a mobile device. In this case, it was a physical Nexus 7 running Android. And we recorded some simple test case to look at a login page and automate it. We then made sure it worked through the SPY tool to verify we can connect. We then wrote a very simple script following it through sequentially. And then we went back over our script and modified it to make it a reusable scenario. And then lastly, we modified the script to deliberately fail it just to make sure that we actually are testing device and it's not just passing blindly. And if you have any other questions about uh, mobile testing, please feel free to contact Infectra Sales. We'd be more than happy to, to arrange a demo and answer any questions you have. Thanks very much for today, attending today's webinar, and we look forward to seeing you again at a future session on web testing and load testing integration and agile test management. Thank you.